I have here in front of me the texts. I've got 31 pages of the text messages sent between Ashley Merchant and Terrence Bradley. We've got them. We, we've got them right here. We're going to go through them together. Just got them. Obtained by our guest, Phil Holloway. I told you he was breaking big news in this case, and here he breaks it again right here on The Megyn Kelly Show. You heard a couple of them earlier discussed in this show, but we are going to go over them all in order as they happened. Not every single one, because there's 31 pages. We'll be here all day, but the, the relevant one. Again, these are some of the texts that Terrence Bradley is now claiming he was merely speculating about. You, you decide. We'll walk you through them. We'll let you decide. My team's been going crazy on this <laughs> this morning in the past few minutes trying to get something in order here. The portion of text exchanges we received, we believe this is everything. We believe this is all texts between Merchant and Bradley. Um, that's what we understand at this time. They show Merchant and Bradley texting as far back as September. Here's September 18th, where Merchant texts, look at this, we're putting them on the board for you. You guys gotta, gotta go to youtube.com slash Megan Kelly to sign up. You can watch all this live um, when we, it drops later today. Merchant texts, any idea who I could get an affidavit from on the affair? Bradley responds, no, no one would freely burn that bridge. We had heard her make reference to this back on February 15th at the hearing. We've never seen it. Merchant responds, okay. If Chris was asked under oath, would he know? Don't know who Chris is. Merchant is likely though, talking about Wade's law partner, Chris Campbell. Bradley responds, no. Okay, so the question was, if Chris is asked, would he know? Bradley says, no. Merchant says, wow, I figured he would. I didn't expect them to be so careful. Bradley re responds, he knows, but he won't admit it. I'm sorry, but this is not how someone who knows nothing about an affair sounds. <laughs> it's, it's like the guy, he's caught, sorry. Like Nathan's caught, Fanny's caught, Terrence is caught giving it up. Ashley Merchant has been an honest broker from the beginning and was wrongfully smeared by Willis uh, let's keep going, all right? Um, January 5th, 2024, that, that's before Ashley Merchant filed her motion requesting that Wade and Willis and the entire DA's office be disqualified from further prosecuting this case. Uh, she texts, I assume you knew about the trips. Wow, oh wow. Uh, insane, I'm shocked. And then she goes on, well, not really, but somewhat. And he writes, no, I didn't. When did it happen? She says, last trip was this summer, May or June. He says, no, I didn't know I was gone by then. Doesn't surprise me. This is the part we were just talking about. Doesn't surprise me. They took many trips to Florida, Texas. Again, that's new. We didn't know about that. And then she responds, and Napa. And he writes, California. And she writes, yep. Uh, and then he says, when she moved her daughter there. Uh, she responds, I can't believe they were so carefree. I'm trying to anticipate her response when I blow this up. And he says something about her daughter flunking out of a school, FAMU, and moving to California in defense of the daughter. No idea whether that's true. Um, let's see, uh, let's see that she goes on to say, dang, they had a full on relationship, insane, just insane. And he responds, he went to help her move, move her, meaning the daughter. She responds, why she would hire him is insane. He writes, yes, he's admitting, I agree, it's insane she hired him. Why would it be insane to hire him if they weren't having an affair? He's saying right here, they were having an affair when she hired him, which we knew it was obvious. That's what the evidence has shown. And this is where the text we went over earlier comes in, which we'd only seen a portion of earlier where she responds like, just date him, don't hire him. And she says, do you think it started before she hired him? He responds, absolutely. And then added, it started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton, which we pointed out to you before was in 2019. And then she liked that. And then he said they met at the municipal court CLE conference. She responded, that's what I figured when he was married. Then right after that comes the next text we went over. Is this accurate? It's, it's literally 13 minutes later, she texts, is this accurate? Upon information and belief, Willis and Wade met while both were serving as magistrate judges and began a romantic relationship at that time. He responds, no, municipal court. She says, thank you. He says, listen to this. 
He says, but you can't put where they met. Not many people know that. I might be one of the only, not even Chris Campbell. Okay, I'm sorry. Again, he doesn't want it to be obvious that he's the source. He's worried. He knows it doesn't look good for him to be sharing this information about Nathan Wade, with whom he has clearly had a falling out because he left the law firm. And we saw in the cross-examination that was done of him on Feb 15 or 16, they, they accused him of sexually assaulting either one person twice or two people. He denied it. Okay, we're gonna get to that. But he's clearly helping counsel for the defense in this massive case against Trump and Michael Roman and the others, and he doesn't wanna be outed. You can't put that in there where they met. Not many people know it. I might be one of the only ones, not even Chris Campbell. Okay, let's keep going. She says, I'm not. She also got stuff from the divorce lawyer. I got a ton of stuff. He says, like, what else? Then he says, when will it drop? He's anticipating it, guys. He's, he's anticipating it. When will it drop? He is screwed. He is so screwed. It's so obvious. The judge has access to all of this. He knows what we know. She says, Monday's my filing deadline. You won't be involved at all. Well, that turned out not to be true. He finally turned over his financial documents, which show he paid for Fanny's Delta flight. It has her name on it to California Napa vacation. And he paid for a Royal Caribbean cruise for them. This is Ashley Merchant finally realizing about all the trips. Um, blah, 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 blah. Then she asks him, this is January 5th, do you even talk to him anymore? Uh, and then she said, let's see, Fanny is the one in most trouble. She didn't get county approval to hire him. She's required by statute to do so. And he seems to be responding to, do you even talk to him anymore? No, I don't. That's also kind of interesting. Okay, then she says, I can send you a draft. I'm almost done with my motion. I can send you a draft. Can't wait to hear about your trip. And he says, okay, happy hunting, LOL. I'm sorry, but there's like 180 between this person in these texts and the man we saw, we saw on the stand. Happy hunting. Don't identify me. Like offering ideas, volunteering information. Uh, it continues. Let's see. To your knowledge, has Nathan ever prosecuted a felony? I can't find a single one. Never in his life has he ever prosecuted a felony. She writes, that's what I found too. It's bad. He asks her, send a rough draft. He's asking her to send him the motion. Merchant responds. Uh, let's see. Okay, promise not to share it. I don't want it leaked before I file it. I protected you completely, by the way. He says, I promise he won't share it. They're working together. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. He's not doing anything wrong. It's what this confirms is what we knew. He had information that was non-privileged from Nathan Wade. He felt more than comfortable sharing it. Maybe the two didn't get along. They haven't talked, he said, in a while. And he obviously wanted Ashley Merchant and the defense to know. He wanted them to know that this is, this is the truth. This is before Wade and Willis have taken the stand to deny it under oath. Maybe Terrence Bradley's thinking they'll admit it under oath. He says to her, they're gonna deny it. One thing to deny it privately to a lawyer or to the press, quite another to do so under oath. All right, let's keep going. Um, she says, not that you needed protection, but I kept you out of it. Let me know your thoughts. Now, of course, she wants to keep him out of it. I gotta have a glass of wine. This is like, it's a lot. <laughs> She, she's trying to keep him out of it, but she can't keep him out of it. Ultimately, she's not going to be able to think, keep him out of it. Okay. Then he says, he responds. Uh, this is about an hour and a half after she texted him the motion. He responds, I really appreciate you keeping me out, but I think you need to add me in the footnote 15 because I had a contract as well. That way it doesn't seem like I, I was involved, and here it is. Here it is. This is the prelude to the text we went over that be, where he said, add me to footnote 15 and how much I made. And she says, I took you out. I can add that back in. Good point. This is, this is the prelude to the text we read you earlier where he's saying, I appreciate you keeping me out, but you need to add me back into that footnote because I had a contract as well with the DA's office, he means. And that way it doesn't seem like I was involved. You guys all see it. You know what he's doing. He doesn't want it. Of course he doesn't want it out there that he was helping, but he was helping. 
Um, okay, keep going here. She says, I took you out. I can add it back. Good point. Yes, add it back, he says. She says, anything else? Anything that isn't accurate? He says, looks good. We've been over that. She loved that. Uh, looks good. How do you think they will respond? I'm trying to anticipate. He says, did you look at campaign contributions? I can't remember what we gave her when she was running. Uh, she says, good idea. And Sonia Allen now, how will they react to this? She reiterates, attack me. Give the stupid no fear or favor speech. He says, no, they will deny it. They won't attack you. Uh, they're going to deny it. And she says, if they deny it, they will become public liars. Um, okay, let's see. I'm, I'm just reading here. 1624. This is a lot of, lot of back and forth around 1624. I am shocked she paid him so much. How did they think they wouldn't get caught? So careless. This is Ashley Merchant. Why not just, why not just not pay Nathan? Lord, Terrence Bradley, arrogance. This is so telling. This is fascinating. I am shocked she paid him so much. How did they think they wouldn't get caught? So careless. Why not just not pay Nathan? Arrogance. Okay, moving on. Um, okay, she says, I may subpoena the detail. She seems to mean security detail, but wasn't sure if it would help much. Those guys know it all. Here's his response. This is 1724, 12, 12 p.m. Yes, but they changed. You need to subpoena their original detail and current detail. You really want the guys when she was initially elected. And you tell me audience, was she initially elected prior to hiring Nathan Wade? <laughs> yeah, she was, she was elected in 2020. Why would Terrence Bradley be saying, you've got to get her original security detail she had back in 2020? You really want those guys. Why would he be saying that when she's saying, I've got to get the detail? Those guys know it all if the affair wasn't going on in 2020 when she was initially elected. It's right here. The judge has this. He knows what we know. Terrence Bradley saw what Robin Yurti saw. This affair was going on for years prior to 2022. And these two lied. They took the stand and in my very well-educated opinion, told lies under oath to this judge, to these lawyers, to Fulton County, to all of us, to all of us. He's divulging this with zero questioning by Ashley Merchant. She's not prompting him, what, what, which detail? Tell me when. He, that's not what's happening here. All right, keep keeping going. Okay, other than security detail, she writes, can you think of anyone else who can confirm their romantic relationship? obviously leaving you and Chris out of the mix. Maybe her kids, other coworkers? He responds, her kids, yes. Where's the Mr. I, I, like maybe I need to pause here and show the audience, where's the one, where's the Sot Deb where he's like, I only had one conversation about this. Do we have that cut? Only ever had, okay. Can, can I, I just wanna play for you. I'm gonna interject in the midst of these text messages, what he was saying yesterday on the stand, which was literally, I only ever had one conversation with Nathan Wade, privileged or otherwise, only one about his relationship with Fanny. And now he's like, get the detail back in 2020. They're going to know it all. Discover a holistic wellness solution with Bond Charge, a brand dedicated to optimizing every aspect of your life. Grounded in science and inspired by nature, their evidence-based products cover a broad spectrum of premium wellness items. From enhancing sleep and performance to boosting energy, accelerating recovery, and balancing hormones, Bond Charge offers a diverse range of benefits. Consider the infrared sauna blanket from Bond Charge that they say can burn extra calories and detoxify. This innovative blanket elevates your heart rate, simulating the effects of physical exercise. Bond Charge says sweating during the process will help eliminate heavy metals and toxins from your body. Setting it up takes less than a minute and it rapidly heats up for a quick and convenient experience. For a limited time, save 15% by visiting bondcharge.com slash MK and use the coupon code MK. That's bond, B-O-N, charge, C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash MK and use the coupon code MK to save 15%. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.